The Philadelphia Eagles fifth round pick Jeremiah Trotter made a ton of really, really nice plays against the Baltimore Ravens in his preseason debut. And today we're going to analyze the guy's tape. We're going to get into all the different plays in which he was involved and actually had some sort of impact. We'll look at any negative play as well that we do see on tape. Very excited for this one. Let's just get right into the tape. First play right here that I want to analyze, you're going to see Trotter actually end up blitzing. And the quarterback's going to get the ball out super, super quickly. And I think a part of him getting the ball out is because of the fact that Trotter ultimately ends up generating a little bit of pressure. So he does a great job blitzing the A-gap. You're going to see the guard and running back try to get to him. And he does a good job just kind of splitting right through both guys. And you can see that that pressure almost forces this quarterback to get the ball out quickly. Now, the play here is actually a slot fade at the bottom of your screen. So what that means is you're going to get a fade route by the slot wide receiver. The outside receiver is going to just run a quick stop. The play is designed to either hit the fade or come down to the potential check down on this play here. But because of the blitz, the quarterback's going to actually get the ball out. And he's going to throw it way early. And the pass is going to end up falling incomplete. Really, really nice job by the linebacker to be able to impact this play. Second and seven incompletion. Let's get into the next snap. But you guys check this play out. The Eagles are going to run a simulated pressure with the defensive end here. He's going to ultimately end up dropping off. And Trotter is going to end up blitzing here. And he's going to end up in a one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle. And once again, he's going to generate a little bit of pressure. And the quarterback's going to try to get out of this. And Trotter actually ends up grabbing the quarterback. This is third and two. And this actually results in a sack. So Trotter did have a sack yesterday. It's not a true sack because the quarterback was trying to run. And he ultimately just made the tackle. But it's still a very, very, very impactful play. Third and two. If Trotter does not tackle this guy before he picks up those two yards... This is a first down, and you're going to continue the drive. Instead, Trotter ends up getting to the quarterback, and keep in mind, he has to fight through the block, right? So don't overlook the fact that he has to get off the block here of the right tackle. He has to be able to create that separation. He has to be able to beat the guy. And uh, love the fact that he also has the awareness to make sure the quarterback does not get out of the pocket. You know, sometimes one of the things that happens is linebackers or defense linemen end up jumping to the inside, and the quarterbacks are able to get out of the pocket. This is great awareness to make sure to keep the outside containment because you see the quarterback on this one is going to try to get out of there. Look at him right here, try to go towards the right, try to make sure that he's not going to be able to go that way. Quarterback tries to then step through the middle. Of course, the linebacker ends up wrapping him up, bringing him down for a sack. It's a really, really good play right there by the rookie linebacker. So similar to that last play where Trotter ends up bringing the quarterback down before he picks up the first down, before he gets those two yards, here's another play in which the guy is situationally aware. On this one here, this is third and 10 with two minutes and 30 seconds left. In the second quarter, understanding a third and 10 play is usually a great play to run a quarterback draw, a running back draw, or some sort of draw concept. And the reason why is because you don't pick the first down up, at least you'll run the clock down. But usually on third and 10 is also when you can get a defense caught sleeping. But on this one here, you see Trotter do a really, really nice job just being aware that this play may ultimately come. And as soon as he recognizes that that's exactly what the play is, he gets to the running back. Now, keep in mind, this play actually picks up seven of the 10 yards that they needed. So Trotter gets there just in time to make the play. If he misses the tackle on this one, this is going to end up being a first down. So again, great job by the linebacker to be able to get in there, read it, wrap up the running back and bring him down. Let's get into the next snap. You got another really, really nice snap here by Trotter. He's going to come downhill. He's going to make the play on this one. The play is first and 10, only picks up about a yard. Absolutely love how he gets into the offensive lineman and how he creates that separation as he comes downhill. I mean, this right here is exactly what you need from a linebacker, in my opinion. You need a guy that can come downhill, that can take on centers, guards, tackles, that can get his hands into this guy the way he does here. You're going to see him get those hands right into him. Look at him create that separation. That right there is exactly what you need from linebackers. Guys that can create separation from offensive linemen and they can get off the block and they can make plays on the running back. It's a really, really good job right there by Trotter. This one here only picks up about a yard. So just a really, really nice rep by Trotter. Let's go ahead and get into the next snap. All right, you guys, check this next play out. Trotter's going to do a good job scraping down the line of scrimmage and watch him get around the block. It's a pretty nice job. You're going to see the right tackle here is trying to get over the top. And Trotter is going to do a really, really good job just being able to get past it. Great job being able to recognize this play. So if you guys watch the left guard, the left guard is going to actually end up pulling from the left guard spot over towards the right. As soon as that guard starts to pull, Trotter recognizes it. 
He starts to feel it. He starts to turn his head. He realizes a power run, which means someone's coming down on a angle block on him. Essentially, it's going to be the right tackle on this one. And look at him. Find that right tackle gets over the top. That's a great job right there to be able to get around the block. Now, he doesn't actually make the play. But on this channel, you guys know that we don't really care about guys making plays. We like to watch guys, especially young guys, rookies, first year guys, second year guys. We like to watch the traits. We like to watch what they're doing in every single situation. Power runs, zone runs, if they're blitzing, if they're dropping back in coverage. We want to see what these guys are doing and if they're smart, if they're aware, if they're able to get off blocks. We want to look at those things because those are the things that translate into a good football player. So similar to that last play, you're going to see Trotter once again get around a block by the offensive lineman. He's not going to actually make the play. He is one of the guys that's kind of been there, but he isn't the initial guy that makes the play. But again, to me, I like the fact that he's showing that he can get around blocks in different ways. We saw a play a couple plays ago where he used both hands and he bench pressed the offensive lineman. And then the last play, he kind of got around the tackle by just using the quickness and on this one, he's going to kind of use both, but it's more of he uses the quickness. But he does use the hands a little bit as well, as you see on this play. But generally speaking, he is using the quickness to get around the block. But again, the thing that I like with Trotter as he gets around blocks is that he does use the hands. Right? He is going to chop down and he's going to kind of swipe with the left hand. So I do like the fact that this guy is getting around the blocks. He's getting off blocks. He's getting through blocks. And that's a trait you definitely want. Now, it was not 100% perfect. There were plays like this one where, although it's not a bad play, right? He just wasn't 100% able to get off the block. You see his hands kind of end up getting stuck. I think the left arm kind of wraps around the, the, the guard here. He's not able to get off of the block. He's not able to separate himself. And he's going to try to get off the block when it's not really ready. And uh, he ends up going down on this one. And there's one other play, which is going to be this one. He also comes downhill and it's not perfect. And uh, the... Offensive lineman's going to end up sticking to him. Although on this one, I will say there was probably a guy that was on the ground near his legs. And I, I do think he kind of gets tripped up. Uh, you'll see he's right there. There's a guy on the ground. He does kind of get tripped up as he's trying to get off the block. So I do think he probably slips on that a little bit. But again, not a bad job. The run wasn't even in his lane. It was way towards the right. Just wanted to kind of point those two plays out. Because I don't want you guys to think that I'm only looking at positive plays. Although there's a lot of really, really good positive plays. You know, when guys have angle blocks, when guys have the angle and you should not be able to get around the block, as a linebacker, if you're able to get off those blocks, if you're able to get around those blocks, that's a huge win in my opinion, because that's the type of stuff that's going to translate into the NFL. Now, on this play here, the play picks up seven yards and Trotter does not make the play. In fact, he ends up getting blocked off. But number 86 here has the angle on Trotter. His responsibility is to block this linebacker. Number 86 makes the NFL if he blocks Jeremiah Trotter because that's what's going to be expected from him. Trotter, on the other hand, makes the NFL if he gets off these blocks, if he gets around these blocks. Now, I know Trotter was a fifth round pick. He's obviously going to be a big part of the Eagles as they kind of go forward. But the general point is that for Trotter to get around these blocks, for Trotter to make these plays, always remember there's a guy on the other end that's actually tasked with blocking him. These plays are tasked in a way where all of these guys are accounted for. So on this play here specifically, if you guys keep an eye on number 61. 61 is not responsible for Jeremiah Trotter. Number 61 is responsible for the backside linebacker. The reason why 61 pulls out in front is because you want him to pick this guy off right here. Of course, with 71, if he's able to make a play there, you got a block here. The running back is going to pick up 10 to 15 yards and potentially a touchdown unless the safety makes the play. But the fact that 61 had to stop himself for Trotter, who ends up beating the initial guy, that means the backside linebacker goes free. And that means the backside linebacker stops this play for just a gain of, you know, six or seven yards. So to me, once again, you're seeing Trotter make plays where he might not actually be making the tackle, right? He's doing his job. It's similar to what we oftentimes see with like nose tackles and defensive tackles. We're always talking about, you know, are these guys able to hold their ground against a double team? Can they free up linebackers? Well, linebackers have the same responsibility. If you can eat up multiple blocks, that means the other linebacker goes free. And in that last play, you definitely saw that happen. But in this play here, you're going to once again see Trotter blitz. And just look at the move here. Look at what he gives this, the, the left guard on this one. He's going to give him a little hezzy move towards the right of your screen. Comes back, swims over the top. I mean, that's a, that's a Jalen Carter move right there, man. That's a really, really good job by the linebacker. The swipe, the arm over the top. Again, that's pressure. 
Right? You're forcing the quarterback to get the ball out. Uh, if the quarterback wants to potentially go through a progression, and I don't think that's what this play was, but if he wanted to, Trotter's going to generate some pressure. So this is something to kind of keep an eye on, man. I've, I've seen a couple of different snaps where this guy's blitzed, and he's definitely looked good in how close he's getting to the quarterback as well as his movement and how he utilizes the hand. So again, great job on this one. Let's go ahead and get into the next snap. Now, before we move forward, I want to just take a second to give a big shout out to the sponsor of this channel. That is Underdog Sports. And if you're not signed up with Underdog yet, what are you waiting for? Underdog is the best fantasy football platform out there. And their pick em game allows you to win some extra cash. For me personally, I'm always thinking about matchups when it comes to Underdog. It could be something like the Cowboys quarterback's going to throw for over 20 passes. The Patriots are going to end up having at least one interception. Or maybe it's a Bears wide receiver that's going to go for over 75 yards. Essentially, you make three picks if you get all of them correct. And depending on the multiplier, you can turn 5 or $10 into 100 or $400. A lot of my videos are demonetized, so I would appreciate it if you guys can support Underdog for supporting this channel and allowing us to continue to do film content on this channel. There's a link down in the comments below, so make sure you guys check that out and support this channel. And let's just get right back into this video. Now, we really didn't talk about Trotter's ability and coverage in this video. There weren't really a lot of snaps for me where I felt like this guy did a good job in coverage. Now, when he blitzed, he did a really, really good job. But if it wasn't a blitz, I didn't really see this guy do anything. Now, in fact, for me, when I look at linebackers and coverage, it's easily the hardest thing for linebackers to be good at being good in coverage. Now, obviously a lot of what the linebackers are responsible for is really just to take away tight ends and running backs. Uh, they're not really responsible for ride wide receivers. Uh, even in zone coverage, a lot of the times, especially in today's NFL, they're not really responsible for that. Uh, and he pretty much just did his job, right? Whatever the responsibility for him was, he basically did that and he did a pretty good job at that. Of course, 16 snaps in coverage, uh, of those 16, I think he blitzed like five or six times. So there wasn't really a whole lot on the other snaps. You know, you guys see the plays as we're kind of just going through it. Uh, we'll see how he kind of translates over the course of his career. But I think Trotter is more of a run defender today than he will be a pass covering linebacker anyways. And I do think the Eagles have some good linebackers that could definitely cover, right? At least more so than what Trotter has shown us so far. And again, that's not a knock on him. Just wanted to kind of put that out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, Consider subscribing. We are definitely going to be doing a ton of Eagles content this year, similar to how we've been covering the Eagles over the past two years. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.